today we're just going to cover um, anatomy, basically, of the urine, urinary system. So we'll cover the, the basic anatomy, both macroscopic and microscopic. If we were in class, I would divide these up into two separate lectures. Um, so first, there's a number of functions, but related to today's lecture, we're really only going to cover two, and that's filtering the, the fluid of the blood. Um, so we'll filter gallons of fluid um, from the bloodstream daily, like 25% of the cardiac output goes straight to the kidneys um, for filtering. So this allows us to maintain the purity and the consistency of the internal fluids. So um, think of like osmosis, right? The consistency being concentration, that's gonna be really important in moving fluids between different compartments like your tissues and your bloodstream, and also the purity, like keeping the things in your blood that you want and get rid of the things that you don't want. Like you don't want nitrogenous waste. Um, like when you break down proteins and nucleic acids, you release nitrogenous waste. We wanna get rid of those. Any excess ions, toxins, drugs. Um, so we're regulating not only the chemical makeup of the blood, but also the blood volume by monitoring how much um, water is taken from the bloodstream daily. So in this case, we're maintaining proper pH and um, salt balance of the blood. Okay, so um, there's four main structures of the urinary system as a whole, and then we're going to go into more detail of the kidney itself. So hopefully you kind of recognize these. Um, in ninth grade, we did the, um, reproductive system. So these aren't reproductive, but if you're looking at a picture of the reproductive system, you probably saw these structures in it as well. So you have the kidneys right here, this bean shape, um, highly vascular. Like I said, 25% of the cardiac output goes straight to the kidneys. That's because there's so many um, capillaries within there. Its job is to produce urine. And then not in today's lecture, this would be another lecture. This is the piece that would really have a connection with AP bio. Um, it also has a job with the endocrine system producing hormones, secreting hormones. We've talked about EPO already when we talked about the skeletal system and how um, when the oxygen levels are low, then the kidneys will release EPO, they'll go to the bone marrow and the bone marrow will start making red blood cells. It also releases renin, which plays a role in your um, blood pressure by regulating blood volume. The ureters, these long tubes, they're collapsible tubes. They're going to drain the urine product from the kidneys to the bladder. The bladder is made up of a stretchy um, transitional epithelial tissue that allows it to stretch. Um, and then looks like that one disappeared, sorry. The urinary bladder's job is simply to hold the urine and then the urethra, the tube that exits um, the body. I know this is a male because I can see the prostate that is around the urethra, just a side note. So um, that goes to the exterior. So positioning of the kidney, it is, remember T stands for thoracic, lum, thoracic vertebrae and L is your lumbar vertebrae. So between your 12th and your third lumbar vertebrae. So remember your thoracic vertebrae only go to 12. So it's your last rib basically, and then down a couple vertebrae. So here's your kidney you can see on either side. Remember this is facing you. So you see the right is sitting lower than the left. That's because you have your liver right here. So the liver crowds out the kidney, um, which pushes it down a little bit. If you were doing a dissection, you would have to peel away a connective tissue called the peritoneum. So there is a sheet of tissue that covers all of this, um, and that is the parietal peritoneum. So it encases it and holds it in place, basically. And it's pretty small, it's only 12 centimeters. Um, so that might be smaller than you think, you know, just around three inches, let's just generalize, um, by two inches. So pretty small. Um, okay, so now I'm looking at the position. So you see this sheet, this clear stuff. 
that's the peritoneum that I was talking about. So that's the clear connective tissue holding it in place. Um, gross structure, remember, remember from the beginning of the year, gross means it's what I can see with my naked eye. So it's macroscopic. I can clearly see this adipose tissue. This is fat tissue holding the kidney in place, also protecting it from like mechanical injury. The renal capsule is the outer shell of the kidney. And then um, the hillis, this curvature here, is where all the blood vessels enter and exit, and also the ureter will enter or exit, however you wanna refer to it. I guess it's an exit point. Also nerves. So those are things that um, you would want to be able to identify structure-wise. So here's that hillis. Um, you can see this outer color, this is the capsule. So it's a very thin edge, you can see right there. Um, so the capsule is just like its shell, basically. So you can look at three level layers of the kidney itself. So the cortex is not part of the kidney itself. The cortex, I'm sorry. The capsule is not part of the kidney itself that we were just talking about. That's an outer covering. Um, the renal cortex would be the first layer. So this is kind of pinkish in this diagram. Um, you could picture it being, you know, like in this picture, it looks like an inch, but that wouldn't be the right size for a kidney, but um, you can picture that outer section. So refer to the renal cortex, because remember your brain also has a cortex. So um, you don't want to get those confused. Renal medulla, and again, the brain has a medulla. Um, so be sure to say renal. Renal always means kidney. Um, and this, you can see they kind of um, look like pyramids. So sometimes it's called the, the renal pyramids or the medullary pyramids. Either one is fine. Their job is to produce um, a collecting the urine itself, which then drains into the pelvis. So this section here is the pelvis. If you were doing a dissection, it would really look like fatty tissue. It's kind of yellow and waxy looking. And then that's continuous with um, the ureter itself. So that's the external anatomy of the kidney. Um, not too tricky. The internal anatomy, the microscopic anatomy is kind of tricky. Um, for me, I had to draw it a few times in order to really um, become comfortable labeling it. So these sections are colored and the name I put over here, I tried to color code it. So the glomerulus, that's a hard word, glomerulus, um, is a cluster of capillaries. So in here, this is actually the blood bloodstream coming in, getting filtered, and going out. So um, we can refer to afferent going in, just like with our nervous system, efferent going out. The renal tubule itself, so that's not part of the renal tubule, not but it's part of the blood vessels. This rest of this is the renal tubule. So this green portion here around the capsule or around the um, glomerulus is the Bowman's capsule. <clears throat> so this is where filtration is taking place. And then this section here that's all twisted is convoluted, right? And it's closest the capsule. So you would call this the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal because it's close, convoluted because it's all twisted. Then you have the loop of Henle. A lot of resources refer, will refer to the descending loop and the ascending loop going up. Distal convoluted, it's all twisted. Distal because it's furthest from that Bowman's capsule. So the distal convoluted tubule. And you can shorten these two because they're long, right? So you could just say PCT and DCT and that would be fine. And then it ends in the collecting duct right here. So we're gonna talk about what happens in each of those sections. So first of all, this whole structure is called the nephron and it's the functional unit of the kidney. So it is the smallest piece of the kidney that allows the kidney to do its job. Kind of like the osteon of bone, it's the smallest unit of bone that allows it to do its job. So its job is that to cleanse the blood and adjust its composition. And it wouldn't be able to do that if it didn't have the filtering components of the glomerulus capsule here. 
So remember the renal cortex was that outer layer, not the, not the covering, but the outer portion of the kidney. Um, the majority of this is in the cortex. And then this long, the longer pieces, they drop into the medulla, the medullary pyramids. So we filter about um, 150 to 180 liters a day. Um, at a rate one to two-ish liters per, um, okay, I, did, I should say that differently. We produce one to two liters of blood in a, one to two liters of urine in a day, and then this is how much blood you're filtering. So 150 to 180 liters. Okay, so this is how we do it. So now um, how we're gonna filter here in this section. We reabsorb pretty much in the whole section, but I like to think of it in pieces going away from the Bowman's capsule. So the majority of reabsorption is gonna help happen here in the proximal tubule. And then secretion, the majority of secretion, I like to think of as furthest away, so the distal tubule. So this is the site of the filtration. So, so um, you know, all of our membranes have pores and anything that fits through the pores is gonna be filtered out. Now you have these big tubes coming in. This is a high um, pressure system because it's going from a big tube with a big volume to a very small tube. And remember when you decrease the volume, you increase the pressure. So it's extremely high pressure that's going to push anything that fits through those pores out. So it's kind of like a sieve. And it'll push them out into this glomerular capsule. So that's where it's all going to be collected. At this point, it's called filtrate. So you've created filtrate. The majority of that filtrate will be reabsorbed or reclaimed. So this is non-selective. It doesn't pick and choose. It doesn't say like glucose, no, water, yes. It's anything that fits through the holes fits. Um, bigger things like proteins and cells, they won't go through because they're too big. Um, so water, salts, bicarbonate, hydrogen, glucose, vitamins, amino acids, all those are small enough to fit through the pores. And anything that's in a high concentration, because if there's a lot of it, it's likely to come in contact with one of those holes. It will also filter things we don't want, like urea, uric acid, creatinine, ammonia. All of those are nitrogenous wastes from the breakdown of amino acids or proteins. So basically it's everything that's in the plasma except for the bigger things like proteins. So now as you move through the tubules, you're gonna start to reclaim the things your body needs. And the majority of that is happening here in the proximal convoluted tubule. So we filter in the Bowman's capsule and then we're going to reabsorb components that our body needs. So I need carbohydrates. Just because they were filtered out here doesn't mean that they're going to be absent from my blood after that because I'm going to reclaim them. Depending on my pH, I might reclaim hydrogen. So this is showing you some of filtering of things that fit through, or this is the reabsorption portion. So um, we're going to reabsorb things our body needs. So like we need sodium. We need glucose, we need amino acids. All those things are gonna come back. Things we don't need, we are not gonna reclaim. We're not gonna reclaim any of those nitrogenous wastes. And this is selective. So this filtration was not selective, but this is. Only the things that we have protein carriers for will move from the filtrate into the blood supply. So this is like the capillary. So this is moving uh, the sodium from the filtrate to the capillaries. And it does that using carrier proteins. So the things we don't need, we have no carrier proteins for. So urea is gonna float on down through here and there's no protein in the membrane surface that will grab it. So it doesn't get reabsorbed. The loop of Henle, this portion here, is mostly for adjusting water volume so our blood volume. It reabsorbs water and salt. Remember, water follows salt. So it makes sense. If one goes, the other goes also. We're also going to uh, secrete more of nitrogenous waste urea. Over here, the distal convoluted tubule, this is where we talk about secretion. So we filtered 
out, we reabsorbed in, now we're gonna secrete back out. So this is the final readjustment of the filtrate. So here you can see the kind of things that are moving in or out of the tubules, right? So it's going into the tubule, it's a reabsorption. It's going out of, no, take that back. It's coming out of the tubule, it's a reabsorption. It's going into the tubule, that's a secretion. So at this point, I still have excess potassium. I still have excess hydrogen. So I'm going to re-secrete those things. Anything that hasn't been removed yet that is harmful to me, certain drugs, creatinine, any of those nitrogenous wastes will be secreted out. And again, this is going to be actively transporting. It's using carrier proteins that match each of those components. So basically it's reabsorption, but in the other direction, reverse. This is when we're able to adjust our pH. I know hydrogen creates acidity. So if my blood is too acidic, remember we talked about acidosis last week. If it's too acidic, then I will secrete hydrogen and I will reabsorb bicarbonate ions. If it's too basic, I will secrete bicarbonate ions and I will reabsorb hydrogen. So the hydrogen is the key component to adjusting our pH. And the final steps, so we filtered, we reabsorbed, we secreted. So at this point, I have my final product. This is no longer called filtrate. This is my urine output. So um, through the collecting duct, that'll run through these medullary pyramids into the calluses. So you have small calluses that are connected to each pyramid. They're called minor calluses. And then notice three of these calluses come together into a big calyx. Same thing here, two of these, three of these coming together into a big calyx. And that's the major calyx. So you have minor and major calluses, whatever. It's collecting the urine. And then it gathers here, it's kind of like a funnel. The pelvis then funnels it all into the ureter, which will go to the bladder. Okay, so if we were in class, I would take time and I would have you quiz yourself, can you name these parts? And I'd reveal the answers. Um, you can do this on your own later, I figure. Um, again, you should be able to label the components of the kidney. The PowerPoint is posted already, so you can reveal and check your knowledge. You should be able to label the components of a nephron, and this is our last one. Label that and um, check your work. So you can do that one on your own. And you should also be able to discuss what's happening in each of those structures.